Hello yogis, do you have your yoga blocks and strap or can you get some big books and have those for block alternatives for a little bit later on? The same with the strap, this is an old um, yoga mat that's just been cut up and you can make like 10 yoga straps out of a yoga mat, it's pretty groovy. Um, or just grab your dressing gown, belt, or a tie, or something. And we'll get those a bit later on. Hello, welcome. Well done for coming down to your yoga mat today. It takes a lot to commit, and I know for those of us from the Dragonfly Yoga Studio practicing, um, we're missing our community at this point, is what I really hear and just taking a moment as well for all of us that are looking to videos while we're not able to uh, interact so much in our everyday world it takes an awful lot of commitment don't you see how much easier it was to make a seven in the morning class or a nine o'clock class um, to get yourself in the car and drive somewhere to go and take your class than it is to make yourself kind of commit on the mat in your home um, or wherever you're practicing. So again, give yourself a big namaste, a pat on the back with your flexible shoulders um, because you guys know it's a lot of effort. So I, I commend you, I think you're brilliant. This is what we need to help get those blues out of the system, to reset ourselves if we are just kind of driving ourselves a little crazy, just with life and particularly for those of us tuning in right now with what's going on in our world right now. Our yoga mats or our yoga space is a beautiful place to allow ourselves to process. Again, you know, how I feel is there's not really anywhere to put all of this stuff that we have coming at us, that we're dealing with, that we're coping with, all the different aspects of our world. So, you know, I've heard one newscaster say there's no right way to think all of this, there's no wrong way to think all of this, and it's true. And the same anytime. We're on your yoga mat. The idea is to not judge your mental space, but just to allow yourself to be with it. And it's amazing what will transpire from there. So thank you for listening. Um, we're going to just take a moment now to settle in. So when you're ready with me, let's just kind of feel this beautiful, comfortable seat. Make any adjustments, any props that you need. And let's just allow the eyes to soften. So maybe take your gaze down. Or maybe you can just let your eyes close. Just say to yourself, there's nothing in this moment to look out and see. You're in safe space, I hope, so that you can just let the eyes really comfortably, really easily close. And then guys, let's just connect to a breath or few. Feel the nostrils engage as you fill them up with that inhale and just try and travel with that breath coming in to all of the corners of your body that it travels to. You've joined our lower limber back. And this is a beautiful class in a chill setting. So we're gonna go slow, very mindfully, and just sort of enjoy the sort of plod pace of this class. So maybe you're tuning into this lower limber back class because you like the title that's 
sort of your hot spot in your body is your back, your lower back. We're going to travel around, of course, the whole body, but the theme being the lower back. And as always, please be so mindful with your movements. Go easy. This is meant to be just a little beautiful segue into just gentle exercise, beautiful movement, nothing strenuous. So really allow this to be a practice of nurturing to your lower back. Let's begin. We'll bring our feet out to either side of the mat and we'll bring our hands behind us. And from here, let's just slowly roll the knees out side to side. Just a nice way while we're up here just to get into the hips and the lower back. No rush with this movement, guys. You want to give the body time to get there. So I was thinking that, you know, maybe it's just really lovely just to have quiet space for you. Um, my system isn't sophisticated enough to do music sort of whilst without drowning out my voice. But maybe you tap into your music system and just have some tunes playing along in the background. For this practice, for our chill practice, just tune into maybe some classical music. Maybe even tap into your Pandora station, chill yoga, meditative yoga. When you're ready guys, we're just going to travel to centre and then from here we're coming down onto our backs. Bring those knees in and just go for a lovely roll across yourself. Okay, backs. This is a beautiful movement that really does get so much of the back of the back. And if you can hold on to each knee with each hand and part those knees a little bit wider, you're going to cover more surface area. It's going to make the movement bigger. It's going to feel absolutely delightful. First timers, this can be a little terrifying to roll to that point that drops you off of the edge. So you might not get too big right away, but it's fun to build towards and to realize falling off of this edge really isn't too bad. Now, as you're ready, come back to center and just rock the body until it's happy to land. Then again, still holding on to each knee, we're going to guide the knees around in a circling movement. So you want to reach out and around and as far as you can, the closer you bring those knees in towards you is a lovely movement more into that upper back. And the further you take the knees away from you, brings you further down into your lower back. Let yourself just really make this movement your own guys so hopefully you've got me at a good volume and you can just sort of use my voice just to listen along to as the guide relax into this let yourself actually feel the movement how does this feel for your body breathe it in let yourself really truly absorb and just kind of uh, digest it, chew it up. We're going to go the other way, guys. This will help us get into all the nooks and crannies. 
it makes us also just think about which way the body is moving. So it helps the mind if it does travel off just to connect back to the body. Couple more and we're going to wind our way back to center. From center again just rock into place. Okay, next beautiful movement down here. So it's going to be a very hard practice to come up from the floor after all this back body attention. We're going to part the knees again super wide. But this time you're going to press them away from you out to that wall in front of you as you close the legs together. Then you're going to bring them back in again towards the chest. Part the knees out wide. Press them out and away as you bring them back together and then bring them back in, okay? So you're creating a circling movement for each knee. It's drawing its own full circle, but it's going off in its opposite direction. Now, what you can see if you can let yourself notice sort of the meditation assignment here is to really just now get into the fluidity of the movement. You know, try and bring all the pieces just fluidly together and feel how this raises the tailbone and kind of tilts the tailbone. Points up, points down with this movement. So my lower back bodies that are tight here, I hope that this is just feeling exquisite. Somewhere along your route, you're gonna change up direction. Let's keep flowing, guys. Nice big breath. Let's bring our body all the way back to center. Just integrate with a little rock roll across the back. Maybe even rock the knees away from you. Sort of a little bit of a, an assisted bicycling movement there. Until you're ready just to settle back to your back. Parting the knees again super wide. Let's draw those knees down towards the armpits. That's a kooky visual. Slip your hands around to the backs of your calves and slowly help to shine the soles of the feet to the ceiling. Oh, one of my hairs tucked in my toes there. So now let's maybe wrap the hands around the backs of the knees and you can see your, and feel your shoulders really settle into the floor there. Some of you might reach up into onto your ankles. That's pretty strong for tight shoulders. More flexible bodies might be able to reach the feet, or if you've got really petite legs and long arms, you might be able to reach the feet. Wherever you are, this is happy baby, dead bug. My uh, Sanskrit translation I was taught was Ananda Balasana, which is a very pretty name, and that translates as happy baby. Your happy baby is probably going for a little rock and a little roll. Not only beautiful for our back body, but a lovely way to soothe our nervous system. I would imagine a lot of our nervous systems right now are pretty exhausted and fraught with a lot of the stresses that are coming about from all that we're dealing with. So what a beautiful movement that can have such a wonderful internal effect. As we find our centre, guys, just rock in back to centre. Help close those legs back together and then just integrate back to that centre point. From here, guys, we're going to grab our strap. So if your strap's a ways off, just maybe ease yourself up and slowly around to grab. Let's just have this nice and close and nearby. 
from here, we're going to take our feet out to either side of the mat and our arms out like wings. We're going to start to lower the knees and the head over to one side and then roll over to the other side. No rush, just nice and easy. Some of you might find that your knees and your head go off in the opposite directions. And some of us will find that knees and head stay synchronized with each other. It really does not matter. It's just how the body moves. So take this as an opportunity with the repetitive, easy movement, guys, just to drop into the rhythm, just to drop into your breath. I'm up here on your screen just carrying on. So just let yourself go quiet. Let yourself just feel and travel into this lovely inward experience. The next time that we land over to this left side with the legs, let's pause here. Maybe those of you that like a little bit more support, grab your block, sit it underneath that bottom knee. Those of you that are pretty comfortable here and like to add a little bit more in, bring your foot up onto that top leg. Turn to look across. To this right side. This usually gets us right into our lower back. You might well feel this in the hip, the thigh. Be comfortable with this stretch. Don't irritate or annoy the body with the movement. We're gonna slip the foot off first and use maybe a little core strength to help roll the body back to center. Adjust here, resettle here. Just a moment to process here. Make sure the feet are wide, either side of your mat if you're using one, and then lower over to the right side. Look out to this left side, and this time you could bring your right foot up onto that left leg if it feels okay. You guys know that it's beautiful to challenge and enhance, but we're not looking to aggravate or stress. And especially where you might be tuning into this video because you are more sensitive in your lower back. I want you to come away from this class feeling absolutely amazing, rejuvenated in your lower back, not stressed because you've gone a little too far than you should. So listen to you. If your foot is up there, let's slip it off. Let's breathe the knees, the body back up to center. And again, just bring the feet in, the arms in, just regroup, realign the spine. Pour the belly in to bring one knee, then the next, and just blend this all in with a little rock and a little roll across your back. When we come back to center, guys, let's keep hold of the right leg and lay the left leg down. Just here feels pretty spectacular a lot of the time, so let the body just breathe and absorb that. Even take this time just to trickle a little movement down into the foot, into the ankle, out into the toes. A beautiful movement for lower back and for the hip are our knee circles. Holding on to the right knee with the right hand and maybe resting the left hand up on the left hip makes quite a nice sort of stability 
support for that right, uh, sorry, for that left side. Drawing this right knee around into the reach of this arm creates a beautiful rotational movement for the hip. Tight hips, bionic hips, arthritic hips. This is wonderful movement. It's just going to be a little bit more uh, productive than blissful. That's okay. It's okay to feel stronger sensations. As long as there's no pain in there. Let's change up direction and go around the other way. We want to think of this movement as a lovely unwinding uh, beautiful massaging and generating some great lubrication across the whole ball and socket of the hip joint. We'll slowly guys wind it back into centre and of course the beauty of the video is you can pause and just keep going if you want. Coming back to the knee to chest, let's keep hold of the knee with the left hand and the right arm lays out like a win. Let's go into a twist here. We'll draw the knee across us over to this left side. Keep your shoulders pinned to the floor. If you start to peel up, you're gonna crunch the shoulders, you're gonna crunch the neck. So shoulders anchor in the floor. Just roll as far as feels good for you. A nice last piece is to let the head slowly turn. Now, can you send breath all the way down into that lower back? Just filling, saturating, soaking the area. Use breath to roll you all the way back to the back. Bring the knee back in for a hug, for a squeeze. Then go easy as you release this leg. Extend it out and let it come softly down to the floor. Let the leg get heavy so the foot drops away. Nice easy breath in a nice easy breath out. Just a moment here to let yourself notice how all of that feels in the body. Let's slip the feet back onto the mat. Let the body adjust. Bring the left knee in. Lay the right leg down. You could roll the head a little just to make sure you're not holding any neck tension. Trickle movement down into the ankle, the foot, the toes. Even a moment for the face to stretch out. Face can have some mad moments down there and no one can see you. So let's go into our hip circles for this side. Take the left knee with the left hand, right hand can support that right side to the floor and that just makes sure that you really just isolate the movement to this left side as much as you can. Find a breath to travel with the movement, sweeping it through the body. And then somewhere along your route, just change up direction and go around the other way. Find 
find a point where you're comfortable just to come back to center and again take your time put me on pause if these are just amazing for you and throw in a handful more from this knee to chest point let's go into twist so we'll take the right hand to the left knee left arm lays away from us we draw the knee across to this right side remember keep your shoulders other, down otherwise you're gonna kind of arch like this you must feel that in your neck and shoulders guys you want to drop back roll back so you can really press everything into the floor and then let that lower mid body turn from there let the face soften Let yourself feel this, guys. Take a moment. Nothing else is happening. We're just in our twist. We're wringing everything out. Think of your bath sponge or your, maybe not quite as appealing, but the kitchen sink sponge. Wringing it out. Freshening it all back out once you have wrung it out. Don't you feel like that after your twist? Your lower back thanks you, your spine thanks you. What a wonderful way to keep our spine so healthy and mobile and flexible. Let's stay for one more beautiful long breath, guys. And then roll your way all the way back to your back. Recenter. Then release and lay the leg all the way out, all the way down. Let everything get heavy. Interlace the hands, turn the palms up, take them over the head. Release the fingers to the back wall, the toes to the front wall, and just have this lovely giant stretch end to end should feel pretty brilliant breathe end to end feel all that space in the lower back opening up here then use your core strength guys to sweep your arms around to bring one knee then the next in and again go for your rock go for your roll when we are ready to roll back to center another lovely movement that my dragonfly friends and I are used to doing. If you are new to our dragonfly vibe, then I hope that you'll love this movement. So, feet to the sky, wrap your strap, and just land here a moment, feel this. Because our legs are such a heavy part of the body, they're lovely to use here to send all of that weight down into our lower back. Particularly if you've got a hard floor underneath you here, this should feel fab. Now start to bring in a little movement. Go for a little rock and a little roll across your back. You don't want to get too big because otherwise you're going to roll off of this sacral area that we're kind of really focusing on the more the tailbone area your lumbar spine uh, a lot of you are enjoying these videos because now you're doing a lot of work from home right so so brilliant that you can just pop this on. When we sit, when we do a lot of office work, it translates right into those lower backs and hips of ours. So this really could be a daily video for you. What about some little teeny tiny circles? Going around in both directions will feel brilliant. A 
coming back to centre. Let's slowly slip this strap from the feet. Hug those knees back in and let's go for our little rock. So bring, don't forget to include the head. Little rolls until you're ready to roll all the way over. Onto one side. Ease and push yourself up to your seated. Maybe grab a little water here, guys. It can be thirsty work down there. All right. From here, when you're ready, we're going to find our tabletop. So once we're at our table, let's go through our cats and our cows. Beautiful movements for the spine, for the muscles that work alongside the spine. We get from the very tip, the very top of the spine, up here in the base of the neck. Oh, sorry, the base of the skull. And then we travel all the way into that very tailbone point. So what's brilliant with this movement is that whether you have cervical stuff, thoracic, lumbar, all the way down to the sacrum, these movements really get to every piece of our spinal column all right so yogi bring the breath in inhale lift scoop up exhale round and arch Couple more guys. We're going to do a similar movement with this rounding and curling and scooping and lifting in a little bit with uh, some standing movement. When you're ready, you're just going to work your spine to a center point. And from that center point, let's start to get happy dog and wag our tail. From wagging the tail, guys, you're going to wag over to one side. Look all the way over to that hip. You'll feel a lovely stretch in one side of the body and a squeeze into the other. Take your time, no rush. <sighs> Breathe. Let's do one or two more and then ease yourself back through centre. All right, just to come off of the hands, the wrists a little bit, because we know we get quite heavy. Come down onto your forearms, this is baby dolphin, and you can just roll and stretch out those hands all the way into your fingers and your thumbs. You can also allow your head just to get heavy. It kind of swings sort of between the arms. It's not touching the floor, it's just hanging. If you are uh, collapsed in your arms, your head will touch, so get long in those arms. All right, let's come back up. Let's come back into our table. Often we'll get a little groan in the studio with this one. But look at that, I can't hear you except for your comments on 
my text and my emails, guys. We're gonna do some hip circles. We'll take the hydrant shape. We'll start with the left side. So this is the left knee up. Try not to collapse the arms. Try and stay nice and strong in the arms. And even just hanging out here for a few moments, you're gonna feel this. That's good, some strength work. Let's pull the belly in tight to assist. Then, like you did earlier on your back, let's start to draw this knee around in a circling movement. Okay, so this movement wants to be smooth and fluid and as exaggerated as you can. Somewhere along your route, change direction and go around the other way. Notice if you're slacking your belly, belly muscles or if your arms have collapsed. Groovy one, huh? How can you not love this? It's so good. Let's do one more or five or ten, whatever you fancy, bring the knee down. Can you just briefly sit your bottom down to your heels? Should feel good. And then come back up again, it's a tease. All right, let's go to other side. Let me turn around for you. Let's bring this right knee all the way up into hydrant. Get the arms strong, pull the belly up in towards the lower back and then start to draw the knee around. Again, nice, slow, fluid movements. Nice, easy breath, or is it? Maybe it's getting a little jaggedy here as you feel the cardio aspect of this movement. Let's change direction. Oof, that really gets into all the nooks and crannies, huh? When we go the other way. Nice big breath, guys. Let's come back all the way through, land. This time, let's go into our full child's pose. Let's part the knees out wide. Let's bring those big toes to touch. And again, can you get your bottom down to your heels? Then from there, reach the arms away from you. Let the shoulders stay soft. Can you bring your forehead to the floor or even just to rest on your arms? Not just a beautiful resting pose, guys but you're also creating a lovely stretch into the lower back here, really trying to get some lovely space. So the more you're up, the more you're losing that. Keep working that tailbone down towards those big toes. Take your time here. There's no rush to come up. Again, you can always pause me while you enjoy your child's pose. When you're ready, we're gonna transition into our downward dog. Let's get comfortable there. Lift your tailbone high, sink those heels low. Let's go for a little walk here. This is a beautiful stretch for our backs, guys. So hang here, but know as well, when you need to come down, come down and then just build your down dog again. As much as you can, send your belly and chest to your thighs. Push away from your wrist. Try not to have your weight over your wrist. Keep trying to press back. From here, we're gonna walk hands and feet towards each other. And when we get close, maybe using the blocks, maybe your hands can reach the floor, 
we're going to lengthen out into that long spine. This is our flat back. Then let's drape over our legs. Our forward fold. Some of you will really appreciate your knees bent here. Some of you will be fine to have your legs long. We'll maybe bring hands to elbows and see if we can swing and sway a little bit here. Transitioning guys, we're going to let the hands drop. We'll put a bend into the knees, pull the belly in tight, arms dangle, and we uncurl all the way up, lifting the shoulders as we straighten the spine, roll the shoulders back and down. Sweep the arms all the way up, and then bend the knees, stick the bum back as the chest reaches out. This is a slow motion swan dive. Arms come down, we fold back in. Bent knees or straight legs. Let's go again, bend into the legs. Long arms slowly come all the way up. Such strong core muscles to lift us. Feel the spine straight and roll the shoulders. Sweep the arms. Let's swan dive. So now bend the knees. Bum goes back. Chest reaches out. Let the arms fold as you fold. So how about now we go into our full reverse swan dive. Bend the knees. Belly strong. Lead with the heart. Come all the way up. And then sweep all the way down. Now try uncurl, arms dangle, stack vertebrae by vertebrae. Sweep all the way up and exhale, swan dive all the way down. Reverse the swan dive. Lead with the chest. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, swan dive all the way down. Now let's uncurl. Keep the legs bent, arms heavy, belly strong. Vertebrae stacks on vertebrae. And uncurl all the way up to standing. Okay guys, from our standing position, let's bring our hands to our hips. We're gonna take a lovely big step back with our right foot. I took such a big step back, I stepped off of my ledge there. Front heel is gonna line with our back heel for our warrior one position. We're going to work to shine our hips forward and then take our arms all the way up. Warrior One is so good for our back strength, our back health and our back flexibility. Feel this lovely lunge in the front leg and such power in this back leg. Bring your hands, float them down. Let's turn those back toes. Let's step back, down dog. Let's walk the hands down to the feet. Bend into the knees, guys. Arms heavy, feel the spine stack. Breathe yourself all the way up. Roll the shoulders, uncurl. Sweep the arms all the way up. Bring your hands down through heart. Okay. So this time 
We're gonna step up the mat because of how we've landed. So let's step the right foot up. Back heel turns out, heel to heel alignment again for warrior one. Rather than shining out the side, which would be more warrior two, right? We're gonna get those hips to shine forward. We'll take the arms up, go a little deeper. Nice big breath here, guys. Let's breathe the hands all the way down. Let's turn those back toes. Maybe drag the foot, stronger students, try and lift and step back down dog. Again, let's walk down to the feet. A little bend in the knees and this time reverse your swan dive. Come all the way up, gather the hands, bring them down in front of the heart. Excuse me as I eat my hair. Let yourself land, let yourself breathe. Just feel the after effects. All right, this is a great one for the lower back, guys. We're just gonna step the feet out a little bit wider, maybe either side of your mat here. Splay your feet out a little bit as well, your toes out a little bit as well. We'll bend into the knees a smidge, and then you're gonna hula hoop. And it's a very slow motion hula hoop. And as you get comfortable with this, you'll get more exaggerated in movement. And if you're starting off, if this is new to you, you might feel a little stiff, you might feel a little awkward. It's all right. The more you repeat these, the more the body just starts to understand gonna change up direction. This is one I love if there's been too much sitting time. You totally help unknot and release those tighter, or those muscles that get tight when we sit for too, too long a period. So just winding back through center, guys, no rush. When you get there, just do a little hip to hip, side to side. Then we'll splay the feet out a little bit more, fairly strong as we slowly come down into squat. Add any of your blocks there that might help support you or maybe you can just freehand. We'll take a breath here. This is so lovely because it helps again to get into the lower back, all the way down into the tailbone. So again, don't be surprised if this is strong and if you can't get this low, grab your pillows from your couch or from the bed, whatever works, and just sit yourself up on them. It can make the world of difference. You know, yoga is not about making the body struggle or suffer. That is not or was not ever the intention of the yoga practice or the yogi. So be humble wherever you are and, and, and be okay with wherever you are. All right. Let's come down to the floor and maybe you can challenge yourself with that core strength just to really softly land the bum. Now keep these blocks nearby guys, we'll keep a block nearby and we'll come down onto our backs. So back to where we started in a sense, just noticing any shifts, any differences. We'll let the hands rest down by our sides and feet plugged into the floor. Let's start to lift up into that bridge and then lower back down. 
A nice piece from here is to tilt the hips forward, roll the pelvis forward, and you get that lovely space under the lower back. And then when you drop the back down, you can reset to lift back up for bridge. So let's do that again. Bum pushes away to lengthen out the spine and you land. Then roll the hips forward, point the pelvis forward and down. Again, you get that lower back space. Let the back settle, come back up. So calling these our bridge lifts and lowers. Remember, you're not just coming up, you're not just dropping down. No drop and plop, guys. You've got to be really strong, really controlled. Push the bum away. Get the spine long when you come down. Try and bring the spine down as one. Just find your own rhythm. You're not looking to necessarily match up to my speed because I might be going a little bit too slow for you. I might be holding a little too long or I might be going a little too fast for you. So here's me up on the screen just kind of showing you the movement. You can just find your groove, your rhythm. Breath can lift you up. Breath can guide you all the way down. Now the next time you come up guys, grab that block and maybe with the block on its side, however if that's too tall, flip it to sitting flat, we're going to slip that block under our back and have a fidget because you want to be super comfortable on that block and this is going to completely open up your lower back space, it in turn opens up the front body as well. Feel the expansion across the chest and arms can just rest down into the floor. If you want a little bit more arm work, then wrap around your block maybe. Let's root down into our left foot and bring our right knee in and then send that foot to the ceiling. Reach the leg out and away from you until the foot can land to the floor. Can you just breathe that in? Maybe there's not too much there or maybe you can really feel a good stretch in this pelvic area. We'll just slip the foot back into the floor and then bring the other leg in, the left knee in. Send the foot skywards and same thing, just reaching the leg away and down. Again, you get that lovely space across the hips, psoas area, that might be a, a spot for you foot comes back into the floor. And then guys, let's root into the feet. Let's lift the bum so we can slide this block out. Now, can you have your finale here in your bridge? Maybe you could interlace the hands and just encourage those arms to walk a little bit closer underneath you. Root into the feet as you press your knees to the front wall. Don't let the knees splay out. Lift the thighs to the ceiling as you lift your belly to the ceiling. Try and roll your chest to your chin. Then releasing, long spine, push the bum away, bring the spine all the way down to the floor. Let yourself have a little movement just to settle back in. And then guys, let's finish up with those knee drops, side to side. Let the head roll as well, include the whole spine. And then as you're ready, you can bring the knees to center, walk the feet in, bring the arms in, 
Use the power of the belly to bring one knee, then the next, and back to where we started, rolling across the back. When you find the center, can you lift the head and bring the nose towards the knees, making this a teeny tiny little package, and then lay the head down. Let the feet come down, use some core strength, lay one leg out, then the next. We're finding our Shavasana pose, guys. If there is any other movement for you to do here, maybe pause me while you do that and then just settle in. This is such a beautiful little bit of time in our Shavasana. We can feel all the effects here. We can feel the spine laying out beautifully long and just the energy of the class just settling down. If you would like a really special Shavasana where it's a little bit more attentive and guided, then pause me here and tune into our Settle Into Shavasana class. Thank you for joining me today for our lower limber back. Take care. Bye-bye.